Hello and welcome to another Key Smash Studios video. Today we're going to be looking at how to set up a terrain using a height map that we create in Blender from a model which we created last week. As you can see in front of me, this is the low poly canyon scene that we made in Blender last week. I think it looks great, but sometimes you have a scene that is too large to individually place a lot of the stuff. If we had this plain mesh sphere, we would have to place every tree, every rock individually. And for small scenes, that's perfectly fine and doable, but for large scenes, it's just not. It's just not feasible to do it that way. So we have to be able to get this data from this low poly object, convert it to a height map, and then put it into a terrain. So we can still use the paint functions that are on the terrain, and still get the general look of this low poly mesh. It's not a perfect matchup, but it's pretty close. So the way that we do this is we go into Blender and what we're gonna do is use a FBX that we created last week. So I'm going to import, this is a totally blank scene, I'm going to import an FBX and I'm just gonna import that Canyon FBX that we had last week. And, and as you can see, this is the same model we had in Unity. So what we're gonna do, first and foremost is to rotate so we're looking top down. Once we've done that, we're going to create a camera. Come down here to camera and we're just going to add a camera. Since we're in top down, the camera will be oriented in top down and that works out well for us. Then what we need to do is set that camera to active. We can do this by hitting numpad zero, which goes to the camera, or we can go view cameras active camera. As long as we're selected up here, it should work out just fine for us. What I'm going to do is actually move this camera up so it's above the terrain over here, and I'm going to go back to top down, and then I'm going to go to the active camera again. So as we can see here, this is what our camera can see. Obviously, this isn't quite right. This isn't exactly what we need. So what we need to do is actually adjust our resolution and adjust our camera viewport. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a square and I'm going to make it 2K by 2K. So 2048 by 2048. So I clicked on this, this printer over here for the scene settings, 2048, 2048. And we're going to see that it is now a square. We'll come back to this. We need to mess with the output later on, but for right now, we're going to go back to our camera and we're going to change it from perspective to orthographic. And what this does is it holds it in place. Now we can use our orthographic scale and scale this to match the exact size of our object. Just as a little side note, this does work for every single object in Blender. So just change the resolution to fit the object that you're trying to get a height map on. And it does not have to be a square, it can be whatever shape you need it to be. So just as a little side note, it does fit that. So I'm going to go ahead and put this to 50 because I know the scale of this is 50, um, the plane, because we made it last week. So if you happen to know the exact plane, go ahead and do that. If it's a little small, it'll just cut off the edges. If it's a little big, you'll have huge height differences on the edges. So it's better to err on the side of small than it is to err on the side of big. So now that we have our camera set up, what we actually need to do is think about how we render this. So if we render this right now, all it will see is this sort of weird gray mesh blob, and that's, that's not quite right. What we actually want to do is grasp the height map of this object in front of us. So in order to do that, we need to do a couple things. First and foremost, we want to switch to black and white here on the color. So back up to the scene settings, the output properties here, and we're going to change the color depth to 16. What that's going to do is allow us to carry more detail into our scene in Unity. Additionally, we're going to set the file format to a Targa RAW. Now, Unity only accepts RAW, so we're going to use a different program to convert from the Targa RAW into a RAW image but we'll get to that in a second. Next, we're gonna to go to composting and we're gonna come up here to hit check use nodes. So I'm just gonna pull these apart for a second here so we can really zoom in on what we're doing here. So 
here we're looking at the scene and we can see that vague gray object that we looked at earlier when we rendered and we want to render it into a height map so we're going to use two things to do that and i'm going to hit shift a here to pull up this add bar and i'm going to hit search and i'm going to search normalize so we're going to put normalize here and we're just going to click and drag this in here but instead of the image what we're going to actually grab is just the depth we're going to take that value and we're going to inverse it so again shift a inverse and now when we hit f12 what we should get is actually all of the height information from our object this is a height map of our objects where it's brighter it's higher where it's darker it's at the base level so we have this canyon scene sort of encapsulized in this 2d image so now i'm going to go up here to image hit save as and we're a target raw here that's good and we're just going to call this height map 3. Now that we've done that, all we need to do is open up a editing software. So you can use GIMP, Photoshop, whatever it is that you use to edit photos. Most photo editors will be able to open a target raw and we're going to save it as a dot raw instead of a dot TGA. Now that we're in Photoshop, we're going to go up here to file, hit save as we're going to save this instead of a .tga into a .raw. Again, we're saving that 16-bit information. Height map 3. That's good. And now in Unity, we have everything that we need to do from Blender, and we just need to import it into Unity. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a new scene here. So I'm going to create a new scene. We'll call it YouTube Test, and we'll just go ahead and go to it. So here in this main scene, first and foremost, since this is a space game, we'll go ahead and add a space background. Now we're going to create a terrain. So let's go to 3D Objects, Terrain. Now that we have a terrain active in Unity, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here so we can see the whole thing. Now that we have our terrain active in Unity, we need to go ahead and change a couple of things. What we're going to do is go to our terrain width, and just like in Blender when we set our resolution, we're going to do the same thing here. So 2048 here by 2048. And I will need to adjust my camera again just to grab all of it. And our terrain height, usually these things import a little bit tall, so I usually go slightly under half, but this is really a personal opinion. You can adjust this as you see fit. I'm going to go 275 of 600 just to make it a little bit smaller on that Y up and down value. Then we're going to go down here to our texture resolutions on terrain data, and I'm going to hit import raw. Then I can select any of the height maps that I've made. These are all the same. I can hit open, hit import, and you'll see that we have sort of this really high resolution version of our Blender model that's now on this terrain. We need to make a couple of adjustments to make sure that we get this on to the right wavelength. But if we go down into it right now, we can see that this is actually pretty close to what we want. We sort of have some low poly look and feel, but right now it's really, really detailed. If we come down here to this base floor, you can see that there's lots of little dots and, and all that stuff right here. So if we take back that detail just a smidgen, if we say drop it to 1025 by 1025, we can see that that impact is lessened and if we go maybe even another step further down to 513 by 513 you can see that it's almost entirely gone it's worth noting that this is the default material if i hover over this with like a paintbrush here let me go up here to where we can actually see if i hover over this with a paintbrush here you can see that there actually is sort of that 3d low poly look to this terrain it's just a little hard to see without any colors on it because it's just the default material it's definitely not perfect. This is a significant trade-off from the plain mesh that we use for a small scene versus a terrain. This is a much bigger scene, but we're going to be able to do things like use these paintbrushes to edit our terrain height, smooth it out, things like that, place clutter, all that thing that you all that stuff that you can do with a terrain, cut holes in it to make a cave, anything like that. All that stuff you can do with a terrain, you can do 
now that we've imported it as a height map. But the trade-off is that it's not quite going to be the same polygon values as the plane. And that's always a trade-off that you have to make, but oftentimes it's worth it because if you look at a lot of the large games or AAA games, say like a Call of Duty or a Battlefield or, or really any game that has a large map like this, they'll all use a terrain as the base layer and then use certain meshes to offset that terrain. They'll interplace a rock or a cliff face into that terrain to give it that extra level of detail, but still keep the editability of a terrain as the base level. So if they need to create a cave, if you're playing an MMO and you, you need to create a cave in that MMO, you can still do that with the terrain, but you can also edit it with some specifically created 3D models to give it a really unique feel. So if you have any questions about any of that, please let me know down in the comments below. If you found this to be extraordinarily helpful, you can look in the description. There's tons of links down there from our Patreon to our Twitch, anything like that. And if you click on any of those, those would be a tremendous help to us. As always, I hope this has been helpful. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. It really does help us out, and hopefully I'll see you next week.